In this video, we're going to review the tasks for practice three, which involve calculating exact percentiles from a grouped frequency distribution. So sometimes when we have continuous data, or we could also have discrete data, but they range a very, very large amount so that the, the space between the minimum value and the maximum value is very big, oftentimes we might want to make groups to kind of make our frequency distribution a little bit more manageable. And then we can respectively find percentiles or frequencies um, within those groups to see approximately where people uh, kind of land in our distribution with that respect. So in this example, we have a classmate who has given us data for VO2 max tests that they've collected on a thousand college students to see if their sample was a good representation of a random collection of students you decide to see where three students lie in the sample distribution so we can take these three people we know for a fact that each of these people should be labeled as a high average and low VO2 values so uh, these people are not part of the sample distribution, but rather we're using these known high average and low VO2 values to assess if the percentile that they get in the sample distribution is representative of what they should get if compared to a population distribution. So uh, that's kind of what I'm noting down here. And what your goal is, is to see the percentiles that you calculate for each of these three people, do they match up where would you where you would expect them to show up if you had a distribution that was representative of your population? So we're going to use um, our practice three spreadsheet for this one to calculate the exact percentiles of these three individuals from a grouped frequency distribution. So the data that we see uh, pretty much looks like this. And you'll recall in previous activities, when we've made a group frequency distribution, we've split up the lower bound and the upper bound values. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And um, we're going to do intervals of five. We can see the difference between 30 and 35 is five. So to create our lower bound list, we'll do that. And then similar to our previous examples, we're going to uh, include the lower bound but exclude the upper bound. Thus, the upper bound should be the same value as the lower. This won't change our data at all because um, each grouping of the frequencies that have already been calculated are exclusive of um, the upper bound given that we only went to 0.9. So that's not really a huge concern by changing the numbers. And then from here, similar to our uh, simple frequency distribution, we can create a cumulative frequency column. So we'll put CF for cumulative frequency. And then we want to start building our cumulative frequencies at the worst, quote unquote, worst um, value. So in this case, the lower the VO2 max value, or the worse your oxygen carrying capacity is. Um, the higher the number, the better your oxygen carrying capacity is. So Again, similar to when we did our simple frequency distribution, the, the cumulative frequency at the lowest uh, frequency group is just going to be the frequency of that group. And then moving from there, we can add the next frequency to the previous cumulative frequency. And then by the end, we should get our total sample size, which is 1,000, and that checks out with what we had previously. I'm then going to record 
each of the values for the three people that we're assessing. So we had a cross country runner, a tennis player, and a gamer. And each of their VO2s were listed as 68, 47, and 36. So those are the actual VO2 measurements that we've taken. We've said that this was high, average, and low VO2 values if we had compared each of these people to um, a population. And then we want to calculate their percentiles based on uh, this sample distribution that we've collected. So to do this, we're going to use our grouped frequency distribution formula which we practice using in class. When we work in Excel, we're going to do equals, and then you're going to put four parentheses. You'll see each of the parentheses in your cell box turn a different color. And the reason this is is because we have such a kind of complex and mushed up formula, we want to make sure that our order of operations are being performed in the right order. So the first thing that we, um, or the first level for the green parentheses are going to be the raw score minus the lower bound that that raw score exists in. So our raw score we can reference here minus the lower bound where that raw score resides. So 68 is going to be between 65 and 70. So we can reference 65 as the lower bound close the parentheses, and then divide by the interval size, which is just the difference between two adjacent upper or lower bounds, which we can pretty much use at any point in this table, but we can easily see that that interval size is five. Put another parentheses, and that will close the purple section of our formula. We then can multiply by the frequency of this 65 to 70 group. So that's going to be 67. And then we add the cumulative frequency of the group that is worse than the group our raw score is in. Because if we did the cumulative frequency of the group our raw score is in, we're looking at 68, right? So this cumulative frequency is going to include all other people who are, you know, 69 or 70 or anywhere in between um, 69 and 70, not including 70 if we, we want to be specific about that. Okay, so the reason we use the cumulative frequency below is because we can guarantee that anybody who has received a raw score less than or worse than the value of interest, we can guarantee that we've collected or kind of counted all of those people without confusing or merging any other values that might be above um, or better than the raw score of interest. So we're going to reference 908 in our formula. And then we're going to close the parentheses for our numerator, which is our red section. The last part is we're going to divide by the sample size, which is 1,000. So we can click enter. Oh, I missed a parentheses. Yes, I just accept the correction if it tells you that. Um, and actually, what we're going to add on top of this is multiply by 100 so that we get a percentage. From here, all you have to do since you've got your formula fairly set up, you can just copy this downwards. And then for the tennis example, we're looking at a value of 47. And all you would need to do is draw your boxes to areas that represent the different values in the formula. Okay, so red box is the lower bound, purple box is going to be, um, or this highlighted box there, if you're, you know, can't see color, that's fine. Um, red box would be the lower bound. This purple box in the frequency column would be the frequency 
that exists at the particular grouping. And then the green box, or this box here in the cumulative frequency column, is the cumulative frequency at the grouping worse than uh, where your raw score resides. Finally, the pink box um, in the cumulative frequency, or the last box in the cumulative frequency column, is our sample size. So you can click Enter, um, and then basically do the copy function, drag your boxes around for the gamer value, and then you've got your percentiles for your tennis and your gamer players. Now, it's important to think about where you would expect each of these individuals to be. So, very quickly, we're going to draw a distribution. And I made a note in uh, your helpful tip section that, remember, we've got the 100th percentile all the way to the right and the 0th percentile all the way to the left. If you recall the empirical rule, we've got 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations from the mean, right, both above and below. Typically, we say that at about 1.96 standard deviations, so I'm going to, this is not drawn to scale, so don't judge my drawing. <laughs> but generally, we say that about 95% of our data exist in this area. Okay, so I'm going to shade this as green just so we have a different color to look at. But 95% of our data should lie between about 1.96 um, standard deviations or z-scores both above and below the mean. So it's very, very, very unlikely that you would get someone that is really close to the 0th percentile or that is really, really close to the 100th percentile. Okay. Now we do have, we're, we're looking at exact percentiles, and when we look at exact percentiles, we don't always have to assume that our distribution is normally distributed. However, these values, right, considering that um, we were told that our sample was normally distributed in our instructions, we can assume that there's a very, very low chance that there's going to be individuals who lie below two standard deviations, approximately. And so you can use this information and the empirical rule, if you have to go back a lecture or two to decide this for yourself, you can use the empirical rule to kind of figure out where uh, acceptable percentages would be for each of these people. Right? If the tennis player is average, they should be close to the center of the distribution. High would be on the right end of the distribution, and low would be on the left end of the distribution. Okay. And if we're looking at general high, low, and average percentiles, kind of think for yourself what is likely to happen if we had collected a, a random sample of people and then use those percentiles that you've calculated here to kind of assess if this sample that we collected was representative of a college student population.